Well, hi everyone. We're continuing in Mark's Gospel. We're up to chapter 4, verses 30 to 34. Let me pray, then I'll read and preach. Heavenly Father, help us to be good listeners to your word so that we can joyfully live with Jesus as our King. We ask it for his sake and our good. Amen. So it's Mark chapter 4, verses 30 to 34. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Have you heard the one about uh, the twin brothers? One was a pessimist, one was an optimist, and their parents uh, decided that uh, one year that, that would teach uh, the uh, they wanted to teach their sons a lesson. So on the eve of uh, their birthdays, uh, the parents crept into uh, the pessimist room and uh, filled it from floor to ceiling with presents. And then they crept into the uh, optimist room and filled it with manure. In the morning when the parents heard that the uh, boys were awake, uh, they went into the pessimist room and expecting to see uh, the boy uh, grinning and beaming from ear to ear, uh, with excitement and happiness. Instead, they found him uh, wailing on the floor, crying. And the parents said, well, what are you doing? And the pessimist said, well, how am I ever going to have enough time to play with all these presents? Then they went into the optimist room and uh, they saw him uh, busily uh, scooping uh, manure from one side of the room uh, to the other eager and excited and they said what are you doing and being an optimist he said well surely there's a horse under here somewhere i tell you that because it's helpful to have realistic expectations and jesus wants us to have realistic expectations about how the kingdom of god grows and so we can be amazed you might often think uh, that, like many people think, that the church looks weak and fragile and it doesn't look like anything much. But Jesus says, it might look small and insignificant now, but it will one day be seen to be the most amazing, most immovable kingdom ever. I want us to see two things as we look at these verses now. I want us to be realistic about how the kingdom of God grows and then I want to remind us that one day, one day, we will be utterly amazed at the growth of the kingdom. These are great reminders to help us push on in Christian ministry with right expectations for our church family. Uh, but before we look at our next uh, few verses, let's remind ourselves of where we're up to in Mark's Gospel. Uh, so in chapter 4 particularly so far, we've seen that Jesus is telling the disciples and us what the kingdom of, his, of God is like and how it grows. Jesus said we need to take our part in the hearing and doing of God's word. And then be confident that God will do his part. God will cause his word to grow in us and through us. See, we need to take seriously our responsibility for how we listen to God's word. And then we need to trust God that he will keep his promise in his word. Uh, Jesus has uh, told us a story of a farmer scattering seed in chapter 4. He's talked about light. Uh, he's talked about a growing seed. Jesus wants, to know, uh, wants us to know 
what the kingdom of God is like and how it grows. But Jesus says, what we do with the seed of God's word is our business. What we do with the light of God's word is our business. See, God sends out abundantly, abundant seed, abundant light. What we do with it is our responsibility. See, God is a great revealer, not a concealer. Jesus says God has communicated clearly, so be careful how you hear, and therefore be hungry to hear the word of God. Come, says Jesus, and build your life on his words and his kingdom. See, we'll see in our verses today that we will one day be utterly amazed that the word planted, it might seem small and insignificant now, but it does grow and it will grow into an enormous eternal kingdom. So before we think about uh, uh, the parable of the mustard seed, let's just look at verse 33 and understand why Jesus taught in parables. Verse 33, with many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. See, by teaching in parables, he is asking us, what type of listeners are we? Jesus is really concerned, really concerned with how we are listening. Are we going to listen to these stories and understand them the way that Jesus explains them? Because God isn't keeping anything secret from his people. He is communicating. See, these parables reveal truth. Jesus is not keeping the meaning of these stories obscure to those who are truly listening and want to find out. See, Jesus' ministry is about inviting people in to the kingdom. These parables are here to help us realise where we stand. Are we going to hear him and come in? Or will we pretend to listen or outright reject what we hear and stay outside? So how are you responding to the word of God? Let me ask you, why do we have so many uh, Explore Bible study notes still left in the office? We bought a whole bunch uh, wanting people to take them, uh, even for free, and use them, especially in lockdown and over the summer, so they could have a daily uh, personal Bible reading time, a devotional time uh, with the God who speaks through his word. Well, wonderfully, uh, some people have taken up that invitation to get some uh, Bible study notes to help them listen to God's word and read God's word. Uh, but we would love to see many more people uh, in the word, loving the word, growing in the word of God. See, in these parables, Jesus is reminding us that no one is excluded by God. But some people exclude themselves because they just won't listen. They might think they're listening, but they're really not. See, he's spoken parables to get us thinking and wanting to listen to him carefully to really understand what his kingdom is about, not what we think his kingdom is about. So let's be good listeners as we hear Jesus tell this uh, parable about his kingdom. And the first thing that we want to be reminded of is that we want to have a, be realistic about how the kingdom grows. Verse 30. And again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. Well, a mustard seed is about the size of a dot on a page. If it's on the ground, you can't even see it. Jesus says, from tiny beginnings come massive conclusions. 
See, we can feel uh, the smallness of being the people of God. The non-Christian culture seems big, overwhelming. Christians can feel squeezed out. We can face hostility, ridicule. We may feel insignificant. We might even feel lame and pathetic, small, insignificant. Think about many churches in the UK today. They're tiny. They have tiny numbers of believers. But that's what it was like in Jesus' day too. See, this parable is given for reassurance and encouragement to believers that the kingdom of God grows. See, the scope of the kingdom will be massive from tiny beginnings, insignificant beginnings, a massive kingdom will come. Now just think from a human perspective about the, how the odds were stacked against Jesus. The ruling authorities wanted him dead. Uh, Jesus' disciples were a ragbag bunch of no-hopers, let's be honest. Uh, one betrayed him. Uh, his family wanted to take charge of him. They wanted to quiet him, uh, quieten him down. That's back in chapter 3. But Jesus says the key to winning is in verse 33. Jesus taught them. See, the response to all this opposition by Jesus is to teach, teach, teach the word about the kingdom of God. That is the key to kingdom growth, teaching the word about the kingdom of God by proclaiming Jesus as its king. Uh, the Aussie ice, skate, uh, ice skating Olympic gold medal winner Steve Bradbury found out that the key to winning was simply just staying on his feet. He won the 1,000 metre event in the 2002 Winter Olympics after all his opponents were involved in a last corner pile-up and Steve stayed on his feet and skated it across the finish line and claimed the gold medal. See, like Steve Bradbury, we need to hear the simplicity of how Jesus says the kingdom of God grows. We hear the words of Jesus. We teach the words of Jesus to others and the kingdom grows. Think about the first disciples. They seem so unpromising, perhaps like many of us. They must have wondered, they must have wondered, why hasn't uh, everyone who opposes God been overthrown by now? If the Messiah has come, why hasn't the kingdom come in power and why isn't it massive? See, they wanted to see the kingdom of God right then and there. Come on, God, hurry up, hurry up. Jesus says, you will see the kingdom. You will see the kingdom come in power. You will be there if you trust me. But in time. And in time, it would be the disciples who would turn the world upside down. And they did simply by teaching about the kingdom. The message that they had heard from Jesus, they passed on to others. They understood that the power for the growth of God's kingdom comes from the words of Jesus. The power comes from God, not us. Do we get this? Do we believe this? See, Jesus is telling us that we need to get our expectations right. God's king comes. We think everyone should listen. They should repent and believe and obey. Everything is under his rule. We want to see the kingdom now, now, now. But Jesus says, it starts small. With the teaching about me, see the seed, Jesus, is planted into the ground after his death on the cross he is planted into the ground but yet rises to new life and grows and his kingdom has been growing steadily and surely maybe without uh, being noticed at many times in history but it is growing 
See, the seed is self-acting. It is automatic. There is organic growth. There are roots that have gone down deep, immovable, and the kingdom is growing like a huge tree, solid and secure, with branches reaching out. See, in Christian ministry, we all need to, to understand this truth. We need to know that the seed of Jesus grows. We need to know that there is a delay in people's lives. The results are not instant. Hudson Taylor, uh, the great missionary to China, uh, said there are three qualifications for mission work. Patience, patience, patience. So we need to be realistic about how the kingdom grows. It does grow, but over time, God's timing, not ours. But the second thing we need to be reminded of, and that fills our hearts with hope, is that one day, one day we will be utterly amazed at the growth of the kingdom. See, Jesus says, what is small will become huge. There will be amazing growth. The little mustard seed, which can hardly be seen when it's placed uh, on the palm of your hand, it will become a huge tree with branches that spread wide and provide shade. And birds even come and perch in it. Now the image of uh, the tree here, or the large plant, uh, draws on two great Old Testament uh, metaphors for the kingdom of God. Uh, God promises uh, to make his people into a great kingdom in Ezekiel chapter 17. Listen to this. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will rest in it. They will find shelter in the shade of its branches. That's a picture of the nations coming to this tree to find an everlasting kingdom because their kingdoms have been cut down. Listen to this from Daniel 4. It's describing other plants being cut down and in their place God's uh, tree grows. It says, The tree grew large and strong and its top touched the sky. It was visible to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and on it was food for all. Under it the wild animals found shelter, and the birds lived in its branches. From it every creature was fed. See, Jesus is giving us encouragement about his kingdom. God's kingdom has always been unstoppable, even if it looks weak now. Even if it looks fragile now, it is unstoppable. One of my daughter's uh, home learning projects uh, during lockdown uh, was to plant a seed and watch it grow. Uh, so we put, um, planted some tomato seeds and we had to wait for weeks. Uh, she kept uh, looking and it kept on growing. And now tomatoes have started to appear. Do you notice the direction of growth in the kingdom of God? Seed to plant, small to big. Therefore, we will be amazed at the growth of the kingdom. See, the kingdom of God will grow. It is unstoppable. We will be amazed to see its growth. Other kingdoms grow, then die. Jesus' kingdom grows and grows and grows because Jesus first died and then rose. Look at this and study church history and you will see the evidence of growth. See, we need to believe the kingdom is growing and if we are believers, we will one day be amazed at the huge kingdom, staggered, to see what God has achieved. 
Now, can you imagine going back with a laptop or a smartphone to those first disciples and showing them a film or a graph of the growth of the church? Uh, think about it in, in Acts, then through, uh, throughout Europe, uh, then the missionaries, the growth in China and India, the mega churches, the branches reaching out to the most remote islands all around the world. Think of the theological colleges that have, that have uh, sprung up, the Christian schools, the Christian hospitals, and there would even be a little branch there, a little bit of clip of greenery on this huge tree and in this film marked the branch of Christchurch Cockfosters and its missionaries. We've even got a ministry here of our own called the Mustard Seed because Jack's had this vision of from small beginnings there is great growth in God's power and God's strength as his word goes out. Imagine showing these first disciples a video or a graph of the growth of the church. They would think it is unbelievable. They would be amazed. And Jesus says, you too will be amazed. You'll be staggered at the growth of the church, the growth of the kingdom of God. See, it all comes through the power of the word of God growing in people's lives as they come into the kingdom, into this huge secure tree that Jesus has planted with his death and it's growing through the power of his spirit because he is alive through his resurrection. But this parable is really pointing to the future, even beyond us, where there will be the great revealing of Christ and his kingdom to everyone. No one will be in any doubt about the supremacy of this kingdom. No one will be in any doubt that it is this kingdom that is eternal, unshakable, immovable, where all people have been welcomed and many have found rest in its branches. Jesus says, on that day, you will be utterly, utterly amazed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to us in parables and for explaining them to us about what the kingdom of God is like. Father, from the depth of our souls, we thank you that you have an everlasting kingdom and that we, the nations, have been invited to take refuge in its branches. And thank you that your kingdom is growing. So our work here in Christian ministry is fruitful as people hear the word and respond to you. Father, help us as a church to continue to be good listeners and so then therefore good speakers of your word to others so that your kingdom would grow. And on that huge tree, the branch of Christ Church Cockfosters would be healthy and fruitful. For your glory we pray, not our own, but for yours. In Jesus' name, amen.